the early bird brief, November 6, 2023. And by the way, guys, in the actual early bird that you receive by email, if you're a subscriber, you get um, a lot more than just this. Uh, we've got the Israeli Hamas war update, the Ukraine Russia war update, the Iranian crisis update, a section on tradecraft today dealing with strategic peripheral awareness. Uh, intel report on diplomacy and trying to secure hostages in Gaza, a uh, spy story about a North Korean dictator, and a gear review uh, for um, AR rifle serial covers. But let's get to the day inside D.C. Number one, Trump campaign's planning to use the Insurrection Act. According to people involved in the discussions, the 2024 Trump campaign and the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025 group have drafted executive orders to deploy the military domestically under the Insurrection Act to deal with a popular revolution against Trump's possible re-election. According to those same folks, Trump's campaign is also drafting plans to send the Department of Justice after former allies turned critics. This is a quote, this is third world country stuff, arrest your opponent, Trump said at a campaign stop last month, and that means I can do that too. Why it matters. The Heritage Foundation Project is recruiting and training pro-Trump attorneys to take over general counsel offices throughout the federal bureaucracy and planning to bring federal agencies under White House control if Trump wins the election next year. Meanwhile, the Trump campaign is also planning for another attempted popular revolution like the 2020 Summer of Love. Left-wing activists and militant groups at that time planned to escalate nationwide protests and riots into an insurgency, as we documented back then. A group called Shutdown DC, for instance, held meetings on how to shut down the nation's capital to prevent Trump's re-inauguration. Other far-left groups distributed pamphlets entitled Choke Points in a Fragile Economy, with instructions on shutting down major ports and shipping facilities. One far-left group planned to bomb the FedEx facility and the airport in Memphis, Tennessee. That was the busiest cargo airport in the world at the time. Their overall plan specifically called for disrupting U.S. economic activity until Trump was removed from office. If any of this is news to you, it's because virtually none of this was covered in the mainstream press. Now we switch to the domestic. Number two, Bidenomics bites Joe, bankruptcy's consumer confidence. U.S. Joe Biden, U.S. President Joe Biden's economic plans are facing strong headwinds, showing up in the latest jobs, bankruptcies, and consumer confidence data. Why it matters, the Biden administration will continue to push its central economic plan despite evidence that it's not working. This will cause more disruptions and financial pain for Americans and voters' loss of confidence could determine control of Congress and the presidency in 2024. Number three, new polls pile on bad news for Biden in 2024. According to new polls by the Times and Siena College, former President Donald Trump is leading Joe Biden in the five key inaugural states uh, five key battleground states of Nevada, Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania ahead of the 24 election by four to 10 points. Voters under 30, a key demographic for Democrats, say they favor Biden only by a single percentage point. Why it matters. The polls continue to pile on the Biden campaign with younger voters who typically lean Democrat now almost evenly split between Biden and Trump. Biden carried these five states by less than half a point to three points and the polling margins in these three, uh, in these key swing states could prove too large for Biden to overcome with mail-in uh, ballot campaigns. Number four, Maersk signals major global trade slowdown. Maersk is the world's largest shipper and is the bellwether for global trade. And they reported a drop in revenue and profit on Friday. And the company plans to cut 10,000 jobs. That's about 10% of its workforce. Why it matters. Post-COVID, freight rates soared as government restrictions disrupted global supply chains. But this trend is now reversed and could accelerate next year as investors look ahead to a slowing economy and uh, more regional trade. Now let's shift gears to geostrategic issues. Number five, Israel says no ceasefire, no pause in the fighting. On Sunday, Israel announced there would be no ceasefire nor pause in the fighting in Gaza until all Israeli and foreign hostages abducted by Hamas on October 7th were released. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken held talks with the Palestinian uh, Authority leader Abbas in a surprise visit to the West Bank on Sunday, relaying to Abbas the, the Israeli position that a ceasefire would only help Hamas. Blinken then met with the Iraqi Prime Minister 
in Baghdad as American forces in Iraq and Syria face more drone and rocket attacks by Iranian-backed militia. Turkey used tear gas and water cannon as hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters unsuccessfully tried to storm a joint U.S.-Turkish air base on Sunday night. This only hours before Blinken met with the Turkish foreign minister. Why it matters. Blinken's making the rounds in the Middle East to relay the U.S. position and to outline realpolitik from Israel on its war with Hamas. Over the weekend, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel firmly rebuffed calls for from the international community for a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. It's unlikely that Hamas would negotiate in good faith as the terrorist organization continues to call for the destruction of Israel and extermination of the Jewish people, making the group survival and as an existential threat to Israel. Hamas's position essentially guarantees that the IDF assault on Gaza, which has basically surrounded Gaza City now, will continue and accelerate in the coming days. Number six, Western officials broach a peace deal with Ukraine. According to a senior Biden administration official, Biden administration and European officials began discussions with the Ukrainian government on a peace deal with Russia and what Ukraine would have to give up to secure a deal. Why it matters. Biden administration is now dealing with a crisis in the Middle East that may explode into a larger regional conflict that Biden administration could overextend by trying to keep the Ukraine war going while dealing with Middle East and then have to pivot to China. Ukraine aid is also running into trouble in Congress with Freedom Caucus Republicans and conservatives pushing to end Ukraine spending. Number seven, massive allied naval exercise led by Japan at the end of the week. Japan is hosting and leading its 10-day annual exercise 2023 beginning on 10 November. The Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force says this is the largest exercise they've run since 1954, the year of its inception. Japan, U.S., Canada, and Australia are participating with 16, 11, 2, and 3 ships, respectively. The Philippines will have observers on site for the first time. The exercise will focus on anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and replenishment at sea. Why does this matter? Because Japanese defense forces noted the Chinese aircraft carrier Shandong conducted over 400 jet fighter and 150 helicopter landings in the past week, just as the Prime Minister of Japan, Kishida, was visiting the Philippines. The Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy, called PLAN, P-L-A-N, held those drills just to the east of the Philippines, surely aimed at Kishida's visit. And finally, number eight, a counterintelligence chief named to South Korean JCS. South Korea's defense counterintelligence chief, Lieutenant General Yu Song, has been named as the vice chairman of the country's JCF or Joint Chiefs of Staff as part of a continued replacement of top generals. The reordering follows last month's appointment of South Korean Naval Operations Commander Vice Admiral Myung Su to lead the JCS. Why does it matter? Before being promoted as counterintelligence chief, Lieutenant General Huang was an infantry division commander. South Korean officials are framing this as an attempt to bolster the JCS with operational experience from both the Army and the Navy in what could become South Korean involvement in an anticipated regional war. So that's the end of the briefing, November 6, 2023, for the early bird.